Hello guys, welcome to the part 3 of our discussion in Castellano Second Theorem. So if you missed to watch the first two parts of this discussion, I have posted the link in the description below. And now we have this example number 3 in which we are asked to compute the horizontal and vertical component of the deflection at joint B. So this is a truss system, so we will be using the deformation formula in which we have PL over AA. So if you have known this equation already, this is the formula for the deformation of actually loaded member because in truss, we have actually loaded members here. Now, since we are asked to compute both the horizontal and vertical component, so we will basically um, put two P loads. We have, uh, let's say this is our P1 as your vertical. So we assume that our deformation here is going downward and we have um, P2 to compute for the um, horizontal component of our deflection. But if there is only one question asked, let's say for example, if we are asked to compute for, for just the horizontal deflection, so we will no longer put P1 here. But since we have two um, components or we have two def deformation to compute, then let's um, try to use 2P load here. Actually, you can solve um, horizontal and vertical component simultaneously, just like what we will be going to do here. Or you can just use it individually. So you can just compute the horizontal component first, and then you can also compute the um, vertical component next. Okay? So, but to expedite the process, since we have two components being asked, so we will uh, solve it simultaneously. So we have, let's say this is our um, P2 and our vertical component is P1. But take note at point B, we have a vertical load here, which is 84 kilonewton. So this could be our P1. Okay, so our P1 is basically equal to 84 kilonewton. So we will change 84 kilonewton here into P1. But we do not have horizontal um, the horizontal load at point B. So our P2 here is equal to 0. Okay, so later on, we will be using these values in our equation. So the first thing we do here is, of course, we compute for the reaction. So we have the reaction at A. Let's say it's our RAY. We also have, of course, we have RAX. Let's assume the direction. And we have RCY. So we can sum up moment at A equals to 0, counterclockwise moment are positive. So we have R C Y times 7, that is the moment arm. Then we have the 35 kilonewton, which is at point D. So we have plus 35 times 4, that is the moment arm. So we have minus P1 times 4, and this ends our equation, so this equals to 0. So we have RCY here, which is equal to 4P1 over 7 minus 20. So this would be our reaction at C. So we have 4P1 over 7 minus 20. Now for vertical reaction at A, so we have summation of force vertical is equal to 0, upward force are positive. So we have RCY plus RAY minus P1 equals to 0. This would give us um, RAY is equal to P1 minus RCY. And we have a P1 minus RCY here is equal to minus 4 P1 over 7 plus 20. This would give us REY equals to 3 over 7 P1 plus 20. So you have REY here is equal to 3 over 7 P1 plus 20. For our horizontal force, we have summation of force horizontal is equal to 0. Okay, so all the force acting to the right are positive. So we have negative P2, we assume that our P2 is going to the right, hence our deflection here is also going to the right. That is our only, that is our assumption only. So we have a P2 um, 
So this is positive again. We have P2 minus 35 minus R AX equals to 0. So we have R AX is equal to P2 minus 35. That is our reaction at horizontal reaction at A. So we have P2 minus 35. So we tabulate our member here. So we have five members. So we have A, B, we also have a B, C, and then we have C, D, B, D, and A, D. So these are the members. Okay? And then we um, determine the actual load P here. Okay? For each member. So we can... Um, use joint method so we start at joint A so at joint A we have reaction vertical and horizontal at A we have 3 over 7 P1 plus 20 we have P2 minus 35 so we can assume um, tension for all the member forces of AD let's say this is our F AB and F AD so we um, compute for FAD first, so we can sum up force vertical is equal to zero, upward force are positive. So we have RAY plus FAD, so we compute for the vertical component, so since this is 4 vertical, 4 horizontal, that means the hypotenuse is equal to, let's see if this is 4, this is 4, and that is 4 square root of 2. That means um, the vertical component should be um, FAD times 4 over 4 square root of 2. And this equals to 0. So we have FAD times 4. So we can cancel out 4. We have 1 over square root of 2. This is equal to negative RAY. And that is we have FAD is equal to negative square root of 2 RAY. Now take note, all the directions of our internal forces here are only assumption. Okay? So we have FAD is equal to negative square root of 2. Our AY here is 3 over 7 P1 plus 20. So this would be our FAD. So we have negative square root of 2 times 3 over 7 P1 plus 20. And then we compute the FAB, so we have summation of force horizontal is equal to zero. Um, force acting to the right are positive, so we have RAX, that is a negative, since RAX here, we assume that this is going to the left. Then we have a plus FAD times, of course, we have the horizontal component, that is 1 over square root of 2 as well. Okay, then plus F. AB equals to 0. So we have FAB here which is equal to RAX minus FAD times 1 over square root of 2. This would give us the value of FAB here which is now RAX is equal to P2 minus 35. Correct? So we subtract the value of FAD in which we have negative square root of 2 times 3 over 7 P1 plus 20 times 1 over square root of 2. So therefore, we have the value of FAB here which is equal to, now we, ca we can cancel square root of 2, so we have a P2 minus 35 minus we have, now take note this becomes positive, so we have 3 over 7, P1 plus 20, or we have FAB, which is equal to P2 plus 3 over 7, P1 minus 15. So we have the value of AB, which is P2 plus 3 over 7, P1 minus 15. So we have uh, 3 members remaining. So we can cut at joint B so we have this B then we have of course we have a P1 which is acting downward and we have P2 
P2, which is uh, 0, of course, but later on we will use the value, the, the true value of P2. And then we have the member FBD. Let's assume that that is tension. We have FBD. Let's assume that we have tensile FBC. And we have FAB, but um, in our previous computation, we assume that AB is tension, correct? So we assume that our AB is in tension. Therefore, we have to be consistent with our um, orientation. That means we also set FAB here as tension again. Okay, so this should be going away from the joint. So therefore, this is our FAB. So we can compute um, FBD here first by summing up force vertical is equal to zero. Upward force are positive. So we have FBD minus P1 equals to zero. That would give us the value of FBD is equal to P1. Okay, so we have FBD equals to P1. Now we compute for the value of FBC by summing up force horizontal is equal to zero. So all the force acting to the right are positive. So we have FBC. Now we have plus P2 minus FAB equals to zero. Okay, so we have FBC equals to FAB minus P2. So FBC equals to, now FAB here has a value of P2 plus 3 over 7 P1 minus 15. P2 plus 3 over 7 P1 minus 15 minus P2. Now we can cancel out P2 here. So therefore the value of FBC is equal to 3 over 7 P1 minus 15. So you have BC is equal to 3 over 7 P1 minus 15. And now lastly we have um, CD. Now we can cut at joint C. So we have at joint C. Now at joint C we have a vertical reaction RCY which is a value of 4 P1 over 7 minus 20 and we assume that FBC is in tension so therefore we use tension again we have FBC and we can assume that FCD here is in compression. Let's say this is our FCD. So we can compute FCD by summing up forces vertical is equal to zero. Upward force are positive. So we have um, RCY okay, minus FCD. But the vertical component of FCD is, now again, we have a four vertical and three horizontal that means we have five hypotenuse to compute for the vertical we just multiply it by four over five and this and this equals to zero now we have fcd or times four over five and this equals to rcy that means we have fcd is equal to five over four RCY. But we have the value of RCY which is so 5 over 4 times 4 over 7 P1 minus 20. So we have 5 over 7 P1 minus 25. So this is the answer of our force at member CD. So we have um, CD here, which is 5 over 7, P1 minus 25. Okay? So we can now compute um, first the vertical at C. So let's say this is our deformation um, at C. So we can now compute first the vertical component of um, deformation at B. So we can now compute first the... Uh, the vertical component of the deflection at joint B. So we have um, the vertical component at joint B is equal to the summation of the partial derivative of, um, let's say it's our F, uh, with respect to the partial derivative of P1. We will be using, we will be using P1 here because our vertical um, force here is in terms of P1. Okay. So we have the partial derivative of F with respect 
to P1 is equal to. Now, if we derive this equation, we would have P2 and negative 15 here as constant. And the derivation of constant is equal to 0. So therefore, this is only the term that we have derivation. And that would give us 3 over 7. Okay? So you review your differential calculus. Now, for this equation, we would have also 3 over 7. Now, for this one, we would have 5 over 7. Now, for this one, we have 1. And lastly, for AD, we have 3 square root of 2, this negative over 7. And these are the derivative of this um, force equation with respect to P1. And since our members here are different when it comes to length, so we tabulate the length. Okay. Member AB is, since this is 4, and this is 4, so therefore our AD here is 4 square root of 2. Okay, so our AD is 4 square root of 2. Our AB is 4 meters. BC is 3 meters. CD is 5 meters. Since if this is 3, this is 4, therefore this one is 5 by Pythagorean theorem. And BD, lastly, we have 4 meters. So we can now um, compute the deformation, but first we can compute the deflection or the vertical component of the deflection at point B. Let's say we have the deflection um, vertical of joint B, and this equals to the summation of the partial derivative of F with respect to the partial derivative of P1. We are using P1 here because um, we are referring to the vertical deflection and we have a p1 here that would give us the vertical deflection then we have the f okay times the length over ae since our ae here is constant that means all the cross sections all the materials are the same for all members okay so we can um, leave that as constant so all we need to do is substitute the value of this um, this term this f here and the length of our truss so we have now let's begin with a b so we have um 3 over 7 correct that is the um the partial differentiation times the f our f here so we will be using this um formula this is our f we have a p2 now p2 we take the value of our P1 and P2 back in our equation. Now, we know that our P1 is equal to 84 kilonewton. And P2 is equal to 0. So, we take the value of our P here in the equation. So, that means we have a P2 is 0. That means we only have a 3 over 7 P1, which is 84. And then we have minus 15. Okay, and the length, our length is 4, and this is over AE. So this is the deflection force of AB. That would give us, this would give us 36. That means we have for AB, and the deformation is 36. And then we have the deformation for BC, and that is we have... 3 over 7, again, times 3 over 7 times P1. P1 is 84 minus 15 times the length 3. And these are all over the AE. And this would give us 27 over AE. So we have 27 over AE for BC. For CD, we have 5 over 7 times 5 over 7 times the P1 is 84. That's minus 25 times the length 5. And that these are all over AE. This would give us 1, 2, 5 over AE. So we have here 1, 2, 5 over AE. For BD, you just need to multiply P1, 4, and 1. The deformation for BD is equal to um, P1 is 84 
times 1 times 4, this would give us 336 over AE. So we have 336 over AE. Now lastly for AD, we have um, the partial derivative is negative 3 square root of 2 over 7 times negative square root of 2 times 3 over 7 times P1 here is 84 plus 20 times the length 4 square root of 2 and these are all over AE and this would give us the value which is we have a 271.53 over AE okay so therefore we have 271.53 over AE so these are the vertical component of B so if we sum up all of this value so we would have 795.53 so therefore the vertical component of the of the deflection of joint B is equal to 795.53 over AE the unit of the numerator is in terms of kilonewton meter okay and to compute the exact value we have 795.53 so we multiply a 1000 to convert kilonewton to newton and another 1000 to, conv com to convert meter to millimeter over the area our area is 1200 millimeter squared so we have 1200 millimeter squared and E is 200 gigapascal so we have 200 times 10 raised to the 3 that is in megapascal that means we have newton over millimeter squared so we can cancel out newton and the millimeter squared the remaining unit is in terms of millimeter so that means we have the answer 3.315 millimeters so this is now our answer or the vertical component of the deflection at b and this is um, ha is going downward okay since we have positive answer that means our um, direction of p which is going downward is correct and that constitutes that our deflection is going downward as well okay so we have now the vertical component of the deflection of joint b now for the horizontal component we need to compute the partial derivative of f with respect to the partial derivative of p2 since p2 here um, is is used to compute for the horizontal deflection of joint b okay so in that case we have uh, p2 the derivation of this equation with respect to p2 is equal to 1 because we set p1 and 15 here as constant and that would give us zero derivation with respect to p2 and we only have a p2 here as our term for derivation that means we have one now for this equation we have zero because we do not have a p2 in any of the term then for this equation we have a zero as well for this equation we have a zero and for ad we have a zero again since all of these equations do not contain p2 on their terms or on the equation okay so that means uh, this ab here is the only uh, member that would cause horizontal deflection so we have the deformation horizontal of joint b is equal to so we have the horizontal of b is equal to the summation of the partial the, the partial derivation of f with respect to p2 times f l over a e now in that case in that case we only have a b so we have the partial derivative is only one times f so we take the value of p1 and p2 in this equation so we have p2 is equal to zero plus three over seven times p1 which is 84 minus 15 times the l l is four over AE this would give us 
84 over AE. So this is 84 over AE. So therefore, the total deformation is 84 over AE. So to compute for the um, the real or the exact deformation, so we have 84. So we multiply 1,000 times 1,000 to convert kilonewton meter to newton meter millimeter over the area which is 1,200 millimeter squared and E is equal to 200,000 and the unit is in newton millimeter squared. So we can cancel out newton and millimeter squared. The remaining would be in terms of millimeter. The answer is 0 0.35 millimeter and since we have positive answer our direction of p2 is correct okay that is the direction of our p2 and that would also means that the horizontal deformation is also going to the right okay so therefore this direction here is rightward so this now the deflection or the horizontal component of that deflection of joint b so therefore Joint B would deflect vertically and horizontally. So we have the deflection is on this point. This is our B prime. We have um, V. We have deflection horizontal. And this is our deflection vertical. So our B would move here. So therefore, this would be our deflection for the truss system. So this is the estimated deflection because we do not know yet the direction of the deflection of joint D or joint C. But we know that our B, we are already sure that our B moves um, to the right and downward. But in case of a question like you need to compute the total deflection at joint B, so you need to get the resultant deflection. And to compute that, we need to get the Pythagorean theorem. Or you need to use the Pythagorean theorem in which the deformation of joint B is equal to the square root of the deformation or the horizontal component squared plus the vertical component squared. So this would be the formula to compute for the total deformation or deflection. But in case that we are looking for the horizontal and vertical component, so you just basically compute the horizontal and vertical deflections of joint B. Okay, and that ends our example number three. Um, we have computed deformations by using Casiliano's theorem. And again, guys, thank you for watching this video, but please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you and see you on my next video.